Shall we begin? Let's begin now. Trevor Von Eden. My full name is Trevor Howard Anthony David Von Eden. Big name, little guy. This is my mother, Mrs. Von Eden. She named me after an actor named Trevor Howard. She was watching a movie called Brief Encounter that he was in. So I'm named after the movie star. <laughs> so that's my full name, Trevor Howard Anthony David. David is my confirmation name. What can I do for you, sir? Okay, so uh, tell us how you got into doing art. How I got into doing art? Or yes. How I got into doing comics? First, how you got into doing art and then comics. Well, I got into doing, to creating art because um, I love reading. As far back as I can remember, I love reading. And the books I read put pictures in my head that I wanted to see for real. So I pretty much taught myself how to draw just to be able to see on paper pictures I had in my head. So as far as how I began drawing comics, when I was in high school, during my classes, I noticed every class the teacher taught the lessons two or three times. So the slower students can catch up. So since I got the lesson the first time, while she was repeating it, during every class I would practice drawing just to keep myself busy. I would draw hands, feet, faces. Feet are the hardest things to draw. And anyway, so um, my high school friend, my best friend, who um, got me into comics by introducing his collection to me, sent some of my work into DC Comics for a critique. And um, they sent me back a form letter. Should I be looking at you or the camera? I'm not sure. Either one. All right, because I'm talking to you guys, whoever you are. <laughs> anyway, so, um, um, so my friend Al sent in some of my work, and they sent back a form letter. And at the bottom of the letter, it said, if you're in the neighborhood, drop by. And I was in the Bronx, 45 minutes away from Manhattan, where they were. So I dropped by. And they saw that I was brown skinned. Coincidentally, they were just, they were creating their first black superhero. Now, their idea of their first black superhero was a guy called the Black Bomber, who, according to Tony Isabella, the creator of Black Lightning, I just co created it because I designed the costume and the series. But according to Tony Isabella, when he came on board, DC Comics' idea of their first black superhero was a, a white man who turns black in times of stress and says things like, after rescuing a black family from the fire, says things like, I can't believe I risked my life to rescue those jungle bunnies. Yeah. So that was DC Comics' idea for their first black hero. So the reason I venerate Tony Isabella is, first of all, he said, why don't we make him black? And second of all, he made him a school teacher. Because if there's one thing that everyone needs, it's knowledge. If, if you see something that someone does that you want to do, if it's humanly possible, you can do it. Because you're a human. All you need is the right knowledge. So, Tony Isabella made Black Lightning a school teacher. And that is the greatest thing of all. But that's how I got into drawing comics, because I sent my work in. They invited me to come by, they saw that I was brown skinned, and they liked my work well enough to give me my first job drawing their uh, first black superhero. So my credentials are I'm DC Comics' youngest artist that they've hired, I'm the first black artist they've hired, and I co-created their first black superhero. Yeah, and I started drawing by staying in school. Just give me a second. Guy! I'm sorry, I'm doing an interview. I just wanted to say hi, Tom. It was so great to see you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll get in touch with you, okay? Sure. Tell me how to say hi. Okay. okay. I'm sorry, it's a friend of mine. Guy Dorian, great artist. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, as far as how I got into drawing, that's because I was in school, and when I, got, when I knew the lessons, and they were being repeated, I kept myself busy by challenging myself to learn something new. And that, what I did in school, ended up getting me this job, which is what I do now for a living. I love it. I don't make money, but I love it. Making art is about knowing yourself, understanding yourself, and expressing yourself. It's about sharing love, but you gotta have that first. So you gotta know who you are. So, uh, my next question, at the Black Lightning panel yesterday, you said something very interesting about racism and how people who even say race, that's making yeah. them racist. Could you, yeah, could you restate um, that? I wrote a book about Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion in the world, 
and he was the epitome of a non-racist individual who conquered a racist country because Jack Johnson's secret is that he saw people as people. They asked him 100 years ago, what are, what are your thoughts on race? And he said, I treat people as if race doesn't exist. And that's a secret. Racism is anyone who believes in the concept of race. Racism doesn't have to do with violence or hatred, that's the expression of it. But once you accept the concept of race, once you say, I'm from uh, the black race, and you're from the white race, that's immediately dividing people. We're all from one race, one human race. And the concept of race is designed to make you think that your people are the original, we are the true human race, and the other races are inferior just because they're other. That's the essence of, of, of the concept of race. It makes the division immediate. And that's the legacy of the original racist who created the concept of race to perpetuate the concept of racism. There's one race, the human race. You can be a human or you can be a racist. To be a human, you have to have compassion and love of yourself above all. Otherwise, you're no good to anybody. But to be a racist, all you have to do is believe that you come from a different species, a different people, a different race than everyone else. And that's the divisive evil of racism. It makes you separate yourself from the human race without even knowing it. I'm going to put these six that, So, in answer to your question, that was my tenet that I discovered. To conquer racism, you've got to define racism. And what racism is, is a belief in the concept of race. And the concept of race is an illusion. That is the, that is the book that they get you. Right? Once you believe in yourself as a human being and see everyone else, not as different races, but as different people, that's the common humanity. That's what progress is built on. That's what the future will be built on. That's how, that's what, how we grow, we as a people. But if you want to be nationalistic and say it's us against them, you're perpetuating hatred. And you're perpetuating self-hatred, which is the worst. So love yourself and the rest of the world. Okay, so two more questions. The first one is... You want me to talk more? <laughs> <laughs> How long does it typically take to draw one of these fine pictures and then ink it um, and all that? That's a trick question. Uh, it takes me about a day. I, I can enjoy this painting, except for this, because this got too many different characters. It took a couple of months. But a single illustration like, like this panther drawing here, I can draw this in a day and I can ink it in a day and then I'll take an extra day just to tweak it, set it aside, and then make sure, you know, look at it with new eyes. So it'll take me three days to finish a, 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 a single illustration. Right? But, that's because I've been doing this for four years. So, you know, take that as it is. It, for everyone, everyone has their own different rate, different speed. Some people might, can do what I do in three hours. Jack Kirby's do three pages of work. <laughs> Uh, but the thing is, work at your own speed, it's all about expressing yourself. So you are the one who's got to take the time to delve in there and dig it out. I can do it quickly because I've been doing it for 40 years. But however long it takes you to make art, take the time because you're building your future. So then, thank you. My final question for you is where can people find you on social media? I used to be on Facebook. I recently left Facebook permanently because they blocked two of my posts. And the reason I do not like that is they give no reason for blocking it. All they do is say, your post isn't blocked, you've been blocked because it offends our community standards. Then they throw you a copy of the community standards. Like you're supposed to find your offense instead of telling what you did wrong. So the first time they did that to me, I said, okay, let that go. The second time they did that to me, I posted. They blocked me from posting for an entire week without giving me any reason for taking me off. So I posted, if Facebook does this to me one more time, I'm going for good. Because when I post on Facebook, I post so that I can read it later. And I'm not posting some arbitrary judge to decide whether it stays up or not. And the third offense that Facebook did to me, which caused me to leave, is when I went to visit my favorite uh, movie of all time, Into the Dragon, which I posted on Facebook so that I can revisit it any time. I went to revisit it, it's been blocked. There you go. Bruce Lee is a man who changed the world. Right now, martial arts is as American as apple pie. That's because of Bruce Lee, one man. That's not somebody you block off of a public social media. If you block him, I'm gone. So I'm off of Facebook for that reason. I do not believe in censorship. 
I do not believe in arbitrary censorship. When I write, I write to me and to whoever wants to read it, not to some judge who's going to decide whether it's good or bad. So that's all I want to say about Facebook. They're gone. As far as social media, I haven't tried Twitter or anything else yet. But um, you guys can find me on Wikipedia, or you can actually you can see a lot of my work on Google. Wikipedia tell me about tell you about me. That's the story. Yeah, but social media, I used to be on Facebook, not anymore. I'm never going to be on a social media where they can judge what I post. What? Oh, I'm sorry, that is going to be Trevor okay. Howard Anthony, David Von Eden, big name, little guy. But. So.